and we'll get started. All right, if you can start off by saying and spelling your first and last name and giving us your title. Marsha, M-A-R-S-H-A, Blackburn, B-L-A-C-K-B-U-R-N, and I'm U.S. Senator, State of Tennessee. All right, and uh, so let's start off with the uh, the passage of the Kids Online Safety Act. How, how does that make you feel now in this past? We are thrilled to have this clear that first all important hurdle. And in September, it should go to the floor. This is something we have heard from thousands of parents and pediatricians and and teachers and principals that this needed to get passed. So to have it come out of Commerce Committee on a completely unanimous vote, bipartisan. And of course, it's bipartisan legislation with Senator Blumenthal and me working together on this. So big step, big victory. And we are looking forward to getting it out of the Senate through the House and to the president's desk for his signature. What we've learned from all these parent groups uh, with which we've worked is that they are very frustrated with the cyberbullying, the way social media is used by pedophiles, by drug dealers, uh, really bad actors. And our children are being exposed to all sorts of things in the virtual space that in the real world, there are laws against that exposure. And parents want a way to protect their children and to be able to open up these algorithms, set their own settings, and then report things to the social media company and require that social media company to respond and to take an action to correct that wrong. So this legislation does that. It gives parents the toolbox that they need to help protect their children. And it puts the responsibility for safety by design on the social media companies and says, look, you can't look at our children as your product. You've been doing that. And everybody's about had enough of that. It's time to put parents and kids in charge. All right. And one question that one of my producers had for you on this bill was, um, so are, are we talking about age verification or different tiers of access to information when it comes to this bill? What we're talking about is giving parents the tools to set that. What we do not want is age verification that requires parents to submit driver's license information, passports, personal identifying information that would then expose the children even more uh, with home addresses, um, contact information, things of that nature. We do study age verification to figure out how to do this, but you do not want to make the children more vulnerable. That is why age verification, while it sounds great in theory, what we have to do is give parents the ability, not the federal government, parents, the ability to protect their children and go through and manipulate those settings so that it's appropriate for their child. All right. And another, <clears throat> you may have already answered this and you can tell me if you had. But another question that the producer had was uh, the Electric Frontier Foundation raised this concern. Who gets to define what material is harmful? I, it, there, what we know is that big tech and their army of lobbyists, they have fought Senator Blumenthal and I on this bill. And they fought it now for the over two years that we have worked on this legislation. This legislation is supported by 41 senators who have signed on as co-sponsors already and by hundreds of parent groups and different organizations, bipartisan in nature. And you know if something is causing self-harm, 
if it is criminal and if it is illegal. And you know, if there are laws in the real world that prohibit you from taking a child into certain settings. And those are the things, anything that's going to cause self-harm, uh, anything that is criminal or illegal, selling drugs, trafficking human beings, uh, using the sex trade. And we know that a lot of these traffickers have begun to depend on social media to groom girls and pull them into sex trafficking. TBI had an interesting stat. Every two minutes in this country, a child is bought or sold for sex. Now think about that. And one of their primary avenues is social media. All right, and let's talk about human trafficking. You recently introduced a resolution calling for action to end human trafficking. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, indeed. What we are doing is building bipartisan support for beginning to address this issue. We've had so many calls on this because the the scourge of human trafficking and what is happening has had so much publicity lately. And people have begun to realize that it is happening in their communities. And when you look at the southern border, for instance, uh, most of the women and girls that are coming across that southern border are ending up in the sex trafficking trade or the labor gangs. And many of them, about 90% have been physically abused by the cartels as they're making this journey, physically, mentally, emotionally, and sexually abused. So what we're doing is letting raising the awareness with our colleagues human trafficking has become a 150 billion dollar a year business it is modern day slavery and if you go back even five or six years ago it was a half billion dollar a year business and what we have to do is protect these women and children that are so vulnerable. Uh, Young boys that are being pushed into drug dealing or into gangs as they have linked up with the cartel and they're making this journey into the country. So raising this awareness is an important thing to do, getting bipartisan support so that we do our part to defend people and closing that Southern border so that illegal entry comes to an end. When you look at some of the stats that are out there and how people have gone through this process coming to the country, and then you look at uh, FBI did even a one month operation. And in that, the number of people they found that were being trafficked, it says this is a problem and it deserves our attention. All right. And I think I only have three minutes left. So I I want to we wanted to ask you a question with some of the stuff that's going on in the news right now Um, with former President Trump. Do you think he broke the law in his actions after the 2020 election and leading up to January 6th? You know, it's so interesting to look at when things happen to the Bidens, then their reaction is to come out against Donald Trump. And this is the third and fourth time that we have seen this happen, where something comes down, Hunter's plea deal falls apart, Devin Archer makes his comments. Um, You have something against Trump. And what Tennesseans are concerned about, they look at this and they see two tiers of justice. Had a guy uh, yesterday in one of our meetings on our 95 County tour, and he said, Marsha, he said the Durham report that showed that Hillary Clinton went, uh, she created the Russia collusion. And then she paid to have this thing pushed out. And nobody's done anything to her 
or any of her campaign staff that deleted emails. They bleach bitted 30,000 emails. There was a computer that had classified documentation and they destroyed all the cell phones and they said nothing's happened, but yet they're going to go after Trump's aide and the janitor. And they were just shocked. But and there, see, the thing is, this is someone who's not a fan of President Trump. They are a fan of the Constitution of this nation. They are a fan of the rule of law. And they look at what is happening and how something happens on the Bidens, and then there is an indictment or an accusation against Trump. And they said, yeah, two tiers of justice. That's what bothers Tennesseans. Okay, and I, uh, my final question would be, in light, of the, in light of the indictments, do you still think President Trump is a right candidate to support the Republican Party? Every time they push an indictment toward him, his numbers and his favorability improve. And I have found that to be very interesting. And the American people are looking at this and they're saying, hey, wait a minute, something's not right about this. And they are making that choice to react in a way that I think we kind of expect them to react. They're going to say, no, we don't want two tiers of justice. We don't want one set for the elite, the Bidens, Obamas, Clintons, the well-connected. We want equal treatment under the law. And situations that are similarly situated need to be treated in the same manner. All right, Marcia, thank you for doing this. Yeah. Absolutely. All Thank right. you. No problem. You have a great day. You too. All right. Bye.